would like to begin by playing a song for you. Let's see if you can name this tune, which is the easy part. And then I want you to see if you can figure out who wrote the music to the song. It's a song you know, but I'm curious if you know who wrote the music from the, for the song. The person who wrote this music is going to be the person we're going to be discussing. So here's the song. Let's see if you can name it. Easy part. Mary Had a Little Lamb. I wonder if you know who wrote the music to that song. Personally, I didn't know who wrote it before I was studying this. So to help you out to try to figure out who we're going to be discussing, I'm going to play a song that this person also wrote the music to. So let's see if you know this song. And then let's see if between the two songs you can gather who is the composer. Not of the lyrics, but of the tune. So here's the next song. was nearer my god to thee. I'm curious if you know what person this is associated with in the text uh, History of American Music Education. Hopefully you guessed it's Lowell Mason. So as music educators we all have heard of Mason many times. But I'd like to give you today some information that you may or may not know about him. But as you're listening I want you to consider where would music education be today without Mason? How would it be different? So think about that as we um, talk about the history of Mason. So Mason was born in Massachusetts in 1792, and he died in New Jersey in 1872. I'm sorry, 1792 and 1872. Mason had a great passion for music as a child, and he began composing at a young age. By the age of 16, he was a leader of the village choir, and he taught singing classes. By the age of 20, he could play every type of instrument that he was able to get his hands on. Mason made huge contributions to music and to education and to the combination. So first, let's discuss his contributions to music. When he was 20 years old, he arranged a collection of psalm tunes. The psalm, tune, psalm tunes collection was published by the Handel and Haydn Society in 1821 and the title of it was Boston's Handel and Haydn Society's Collection of Church Music. He prepared numerous texts for children, glees clubs, and um, collections of church music. He was a big promoter of strictly congregational singing um, in churches. And overall, Mason just published many, many works and was very successful in selling them. He definitely knew how to make a profit in his life. Um, Mason also made a lot of contributions to education. In 1832, he established the Boston Academy of Music. 
And the purpose of this was for a few reasons, to promote singing, he wanted to also raise the standards, standards of church music, and he wanted to promote the idea of incorporating music into public schools. In 1837, Mason volunteered to teach music at one Boston public school as an experiment. Now he did this without getting paid. He gave up all this time just to try to get music into schools. So after this one year, um, it found great success and the following year he became the superintendent of music at Boston schools. He was actually the first music supervisor of this country. So it's amazing what he was able to accomplish in that one year um, if he hadn't tried so hard, if he hadn't done so much, if he wasn't such a gifted uh, teacher, who knows what would have happened after that one year. Um, but going back to him as a music supervisor, as a supervisor he was responsible for hiring assistants who helped him by teaching. Um, Mason received $130 per year for the music instruction in each school. $80 went to the teacher, $20 was used for rental pianos, and $30 was for Mason himself as a superintendent fee. Mason himself taught at many schools without assistance. The instruction consisted of several group lessons a week. And then um, in addition to the singing, the students were taught the rudiments of music. Mason directed music for seven years at Boston until he was removed from office in 1845 by the music committee without a re warning. Um, the reason for this is because of H.W. Day, and he was a big opponent of Mason's. Um, he attacked him in the magazine he edited, and some believe that he had, the reason he was his enemy was because he wanted Mason's position as a superintendent, um, although he never was successful in becoming the superintendent of Boston. So overall, Mason has been regarded as a father of American music education, which is quite a title to have. But I want you to consider some things. First of all, where would music education be without Mason? Would music education be part of our schools if Mason uh, wasn't involved? If it was part of our schools, would music ed be the same or different without him? In Chapter 7 of A History of Music, American Music Education, we read about the importance of Woodbridge and Ivies. Do you think that Woodbridge and Ivies would have accomplished what Mason did? Is Mason getting too much credit for the work done in schools? Do you think Mason's self-confidence and his pride were effective in establishing music? Mason saw the importance of the Pestalozzian principles. Do you think music would be different if Mason didn't teach with these principles in mind? In conclusion, Mason was very influential in develop the development of music and education. I can never cover all of the information about his life in this short a time. But my goal is to give you some general inf information about his life and tell you about some of his contributions and then leave you pondering on how music and music, music education would be different without him. So I want to hear your thoughts on the topic. Do we give Mason too much credit or does he deserve all the credit he gets? Does he deserve to have the title of the father of American music education? Would music education be different today without him? What if Mason was never born? How would music ed be different? Would there be music education in schools today without him? Do you think Wood, Woodbridge and Ivies would have gotten that done? If Mason was never around or didn't have, didn't do everything he did, would we have jobs today? Would our jobs be the same? Or would there be a lot of differences if Mason wasn't around? Was Mason just in the right time at the right place? 